welcome back. So, we were talking about the word released. And we know that the word released is a very strong and terrible punishment. So, starting on page three. Even the children were scolded if they used the term lightly at play, jeering at a teammate who missed a catch or stumbled in a race. Jonas had done it once, had shouted at his best friend, That's it, Asher, you're released. When Asher's clumsy error had lost a match for his team, he had been taken aside for a brief and serious talk by the coach, had hung his head with guilt and embarrassment, and apologized to Asher after the game. Now, thinking about the feeling of fear as he pedaled home along the river path, he remembered that moments of palpable, stomach-sinking terror when the aircraft had streaked above. It was not what he was feeling now, with December approaching. He searched for the right word to describe his own feeling. Jonas was careful about language, not like his friend Asher, who talked too fast and mixed things up scrambling words and phrases until they were barely recognizable and often very funny. Jonas grinned, remembering the morning that Asher had dashed into the classroom late as usual, arriving breathlessly in the middle of the chanting of the morning anthem. When the class took their seats at the conclusion of the patriotic hymn, Asher remained standing to make his public apology as he was required. Apology for inconveniencing my learning community. Asher ran through the standard apology phrase rapidly, still catching his breath. The instructor in class waited patiently for his explanation. The students had all been grinning because they had listened to Asher's explanation so many times before. I left home at the correct time, but when I was riding along near the hatchery, the crew was separating some salmon. I guess I just got distraught watching them. I apologize to my classmates, Asher concluded. He smoothed his rumpled tunic and sat down. We accept your apology, Asher, the class recited the standard response in unison. Many of the students were biting their lips to keep from laughing. I accept your apology, Asher, the instructor said. He was smiling, and I thank you because once again, you have provided an opportunity for a lesson in language. Distraught is too strong an adjective to describe salmon viewing. He turned and wrote distraught on the instructional board. Beside it, he wrote distracted. So here again, we can see that there's a lot of rules and traditions in the community. So being late is a cause to make someone make a public apology. So being late is really bad because it's something that's different. It's not the same. And also, when we look at the words that he uses, using the wrong word, he gets an education on what the correct word is. Jonas, nearing his home now, smiled at the recollection, thinking still as he wheeled his bike into its narrow port beside the door. He realized that frightened was the wrong word to describe his feelings. Now that December was almost here, it was too strong an adjective. He had waited a long time for this special December. Now that it was almost upon him, he wasn't frightened, but he was eager, he decided. He was eager for it to come. And he was excited, certainly. All of the Elevens were excited about the event that would be coming so soon. So again, we have words here that add to the foreshadowing, like eager, Eager means excited for something that's going to happen, and excited, right? And the author describes how he's feeling, but she doesn't tell us what it is. And so it makes us, the readers, wonder what is going to happen in November, and what's special about this November. But there is a little shudder of nervousness when he thought about it. What might happen? Apprehensive, Jonas decided. That's what I am. Who wants to be the first tonight for feelings? Jonas's father asked at the conclusion of their evening meal. 
It was one of the rituals, the evening telling of feelings. So again, here we can see that the community has very special rules and very special traditions. And one of them is after they eat dinner is to talk about their feelings of the day. So how would you feel if you had this conversation with your family? Sometimes Jonas and his sister Lily argued over turns, over who would go first. Their parents, of course, were part of the ritual. They, too, told their feelings each evening. But like all parents, all adults, they didn't fight and wheedle for their turn. Nor did Jonas, tonight. His feelings were too complicated this evening. He wanted to share them, but he wasn't eager to begin the process of sifting through his complicated emotions, even with the help that he knew his parents could give. You go, Lily, he said, seeing his sister, who was much younger, only a seven, wiggling with impatience in her chair. So remember how I talked before about they used very specific words, but sometimes in strange circumstances? Here we can see the word seven is capitalized. What do you think the seven means? Well, because it's capitalized, we know it's a title of something. So as you'll find out, each of the years has a title. And each of those years has a specific responsibility and a specific things that they're able to do. So again, that's how the community maintains its rules and its rituals and keeps everyone happy and the same. I felt very angry this afternoon, Lily announced. My child care group was at the play area and we had a visiting group of sevens, and they didn't obey the rules at all. One of them, a male, I don't know his name, kept going right to the front of the line for the slide, even though the rest of us were all waiting. I felt so angry at him. I made my hand into a fist, like this. She held up a clenched fist, and the rest of the family smiled at her small, defiant gesture. Why do you think the visitors didn't obey the rules, Mother asked. Lily considered and shook her head. I don't know. They acted like, like animals, Jonas suggested. He laughed. That's right, Lily said, laughing too, like animals. Neither child knew what the word meant exactly, but it was often used to describe someone uneducated or clumsy, someone who didn't fit in. So here we can see that they're using animals to describe people who don't know all of their rules. And not knowing the rules causes people to become angry. What do you think, Joan, why do you think they don't know what an animal is? Strange. Okay, we'll pause here and continue on in the next video.